Salaga, 120 kilometers to the southwest of Tamale, is Salaga, the capital of the East Gonda district, which used to be the biggest slave trading center in northern Ghana. Where we are was a stopping point. When the slaves were brought here, at the end of the day, they will be here at the end of the day. Then they go to the wells and fetch the water, bring them here, wash them here before taking them to the market. Why so? You see, if you want to sell something, you have to make it very, very presentable. So because they came from a long distance, they were tired. So we have to, they have to clean themselves, take them there. We have the share, uh, share butter oil, all that to smite them. To, Washing them, they take them through this route to the market. Salaga is the capital of the East Gwenja district and it's an ancient town, both in the transatlantic slave trade and also in the trade across Sahara in West Africa. Uh, that presents us with a great potential for tourist investment in northern Ghana or in the South Sada zone. The Baba tree we are seeing, this is not the original one. The original works was somewhere on my right here. That one fell 24 June 1970. So we replanted this one. Why Salga has been adopted at the slave market was that Salga is between in uh, the north and the south. You see, and it is in the middle. Right now, if you are going this way on my life, you are going to Volta again. In front of me, you are going to Ashanti region. Here, we are going to Brown Afro region. And here, we are in the north. Well, so the, those who dealt with the slavery here were the houses and then the Moshis. The white man didn't come to Selga. It was our own brothers, Ashanti. You know, Ashanti were coming here in those days because of the, the market. They came here uh, buying things and selling things, going before that. Uh, they adopted the Salga to be the slave market. And there they started buying the slaves to uh, serve. Yeah. So here, one could ask, how much was a human being being bought here? But then they were using a cow race. So we have converted it to shillings for us to understand how much was a human being being bought here. It was from 20 to 80 shillings. There is also a significant part that is the, the slave cemetery. On the route, those who are weak or fall along the route are buried at the slave market in Salaga. And we also have the famous uh, uh, Sawarfo grief. Sawarfo was a traditional ruler who resisted capture and took his life rather than being taken as a slave. So at the market where Sawarfo is buried, you will find his grave. Sanchez will come with warriors. So they have the guns and all those things. And when they come to the chief and the chief is not able to provide, then they take the chief away so that the subjects will look for the slaves to go and place and take the chief back. Okay. But the chief who was then there, they met him here. This this was a, a, a market place. So it's like a like a here we say our community center where people would converge. So he came here with his horse. And they came with their Shanti warriors and he vanished. We are right now at the receptive center and uh, we're using this place as our museum where we have a collection of some uh, relics from uh, the slave masters and uh, a few others from some other elders in town. Um, we have a bar here. This bar is one of those that they use in the construction of uh, wells. And you remember Salaga was uh, known as a, 
a town of 1,000 wells. So many wells all over. I've just shown the master well at the main station. There are many others at different points. We were using this uh, type of bar in the construction, digging and breaking the rocks and uh, some stone. We also have uh, this uh, an ancient gun, a cannon. Yeah. Made of what? Wood and uh, some iron. Mm -hmm. Used by the slave masters. Used by the slave masters. How does it work? You have an idea? Um, this is the trigger, mm -hmm. but the main part is okay. Okay. Right. okay. So you pull it. Mm -hmm. That's the iron. Yeah. Then there is some. Uh, Rock, okay. they normally will put there. Then, when they it goes back there, mm. when it hits the rock, then there's some light and then it drops on the gunpowder. Then it fires. Okay, the so gunpowder goes in. This was there. using gunpowder, not yes. bullets. No, not bullets. Okay, they use gunpowder mm. and they break some iron, mm. smaller bits of iron, and fill in. Oh. So, when it triggers. So then these were guns, uh, obviously not locally made, but provided by uh, the colonial masters. Yeah, they were provided by the colonial masters, but later people tried to, you see that there's a smaller one there, mm -hmm. yeah, people tried to make them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so for, for the slave masters who were in possession of these guns, how did they acquire them? Is it that the, uh, the, the colonial masters were using them as uh, agents? To supply the slaves? No, they brought them in, one to protect them. Sometimes, but in the old days, we told that the wild animals around, when you are traveling, you need to protect yourself. So they were using them, and also they were using them to frighten persons who maybe would want to escape. If a slave was caught and maybe he was becoming notorious and would want to escape, then they would again or just on seeing the guy, you not want to. So does history tell us that many slaves were shot to death? No, 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 no. At all. Okay. No. Uh -oh. Those who died, died out of, I mean, fatigue, or maybe hunger. Or maybe if you have chained them for a longer time, nobody's picking them up. Okay. Yeah. For, for, for gunning, no. The guns were only used to frighten people, get settled, they run away, then they would arrest or capture whoever they want. We have also a spear. This also was used as a protective uh, weapon. Okay. By the slave masters. When they are, by the slave masters. When they are traveling, they would, normally would use this. In the event they have a wild beast. It's of iron. It's iron. Mm -hmm. But it's a bad well, uh, This wood is not the original. We have changed it. Okay. Uh, okay. Sometimes they, they are so yeah, cool. They yes. just pick. Mm -hmm. yes, this one is iron by itself. Okay, so this originally what was used. How, how old are these uh, weapons? Well, they, they did back, I think uh, they should be about 100 years. Over 100 years? Mm -hmm. Over 100 years. Wow. Because we are told that uh, it was around the 18 something that they got them. We met a few of the slave masters' uh, relation. There was a lady here, I don't know if she's even still alive who was a wife to one of the agents of the slave masters. And so she gave us a lot of narration about how they were using these things. And these chains were used, this is a shackle, were used at the market. When they got the slaves, they used the shackles just to attack them to the big baobab tree. Where, but it was so large, the roots were up, so they could just fix it and lock you up in. Uh, the chains were also used if so many of them were got at a place so that they bring them to market or when they are around the baobab tree. This calabashes were used in drawing water from the wells. This is the thing. They will make the whole thing. They will make a whole year, this one there, because we didn't have plastics in those days, and there were no buckets, or there were very few buckets, if any. So they used 
to bore a hole in the use a rope, then drop in to the well to fetch water. The beginning comes. Some have come here, we told them stories, they are broken down, they need plenty, and especially when we see this chains and the shackles, and we tell them stories how they were used and chaining them to, to sit under a tree for maybe a whole day, 24 hours, or maybe 12 hours, maybe just a meal, a small meal, or they all walk a long distance before they get to the uh, market, and how they were treated because they knew that there were no rest houses, they were left in the open. Those who were not lucky and died here were sent and buried in very shallow graves where they have marked as a slave cemetery in town.